Incarnation is indeed a huge mystery. Thousands of years, no one has understood the truth of Incarnation. That is a fact. Almighty God comes in the last days and reveals the mystery of Incarnation to man by himself. Apart from the Bible, any belief is a heresy. God's work is all recorded in the Bible. We should believe in God according to the Bible. Almighty God has every sect shaken by His coming. Is He truly God Himself who created all things and rules over everything? Is He truly the Lord Jesus crucified by the Israelites 2,000 years ago? Today, Ironclad Proofs will provide to you Ironclad Facts and Evidences. With the Ironclad Facts and Ironclad Evidences, mankind will get the answer. Focus on Ironclad Proofs Focus on the work of God and focus on the destiny of mankind. Keep moving! Move! Anti-revolutionist Lin Muen, you still believe in Jesus? Say it! Sir. Speak up! Yes. What? Damn you! Damn you! You're so stubborn! How dare you say something like that! It's imperialistic! We'll beat you to death! Move on! Go! Wait! Anti-revolutionist Lin Boen, do you believe in Jesus? Well, well! Say it! Speak! I... I do. Damn you! Fuck! How dare you say that! <laughs> Sentenced! Seven years imprisonment! Go! Xi'an! A historical anti-revolutionist! Sentenced! Eight years imprisonment! Sun Guanyan! An alien class element! Sentenced! Ten years imprisonment! Yang Chusheng! A reactionary academic authority! Sentenced! Fifteen years imprisonment! Lin Boen! An active anti-revolutionist! Sentenced! For life imprisonment! Kuo Zhichong, an active anti-revolutionary traitor, deprived of political rights for life. After many years of believing, and after all the tribulations I've gone through, I finally realized that the Lord Jesus incarnate is the only one true God. His word is deeply rooted in my heart. It gives me faith and strength. Only Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. It's worth suffering in order to gain Christ. 
Believing in Jesus Christ is a real glory. I haven't lived my life in vain. Early in the 1950s, Lin Bo En accepted the Lord Jesus as his savior. He pursued hard and served fervently. He believed to gain Jesus Christ as a treasure. He took suffering for the Lord as a glory. During these decades, Lin Bo En was arrested and imprisoned twice because of evangelizing. Seventeen years of Lin Bo En's life, he had to suffer painfully in prison. He almost died several times. Despite everything he went through, suffering and pain, it never hindered his faith in Jesus Christ. Many years passed, and he never stopped his pursuit of the Lord Jesus. And now, let's discuss the verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. The Word here refers to God, the Word of God. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. He was God's son, who deserved the same respect. But he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took on him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. The Lord Jesus was for sure not an ordinary man. Christ he is who came down here from heaven. He was the God who assumed flesh to become a man. Truly, Jesus Christ was God incarnate. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up to the glory. Amen. What we need to know for sure is the Lord Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God. And importantly, what we need to know is the Lord Jesus Christ is the appearance of God. Just like what the Lord Jesus said, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. I and my Father are one. And now, without experiencing many tribulations and sufferings, one cannot recognize the Lord Jesus as the appearance of God. Brother, please share your experiences with us. Yes, yes, I want to hear too. All right. Thank the Lord. Now, when I talk about experience, my first imprisonment comes to mind. It was the winter of 1967. I was arrested then while preaching the gospel. Meng Fu. Yeah? Take good care of the church you're in. Do your best as their preacher. As you work more towards preaching the Lord's word, and you suffer more for the Lord, more experience and knowledge of the Lord's word will you have, and more reality will you have. If you only preach, but do not suffer for the Lord, you cannot possibly have true knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Thus, you will have little reality. Some tribulations and persecutions will come to you someday. You'll feel weak and fall down. And then, you would fail your faith. Trials test us all. Sometimes we may fail. You have suffered very little in your life. Far from enough. 
Only if you suffer a lot and bear testimony will you surely be raptured at the Lord's return. With no trials, no testimonies, believers like that, can they be caught up? Dad, speaking of rapture, you see, we found out some new things. I'd like to share them, if that's all right. Oh, go ahead then. From what I understand, rapture is not being lifted to heaven to be with the Lord. Hmm. That's just our imagination. The true meaning of rapture is that one has to accept God's new work, and then he comes before God. Hmm. Son, go on. Well, at the end of the Age of Law, when Lord Jesus did the work of the Age of Grace, those who heard the Lord Jesus' words and recognized them as God's voice soon finally accepted his salvation. This is rapture to God's presence. Hmm. At the end of the Age of Grace, when the Lord Jesus comes again to speak, if someone hears of it, discerns it as God's voice, and then accepts his work at his return, they will be raptured to God's presence. This is the true meaning of rapture. Dad, someone can be lifted before God, but it really doesn't matter how long they've believed or suffered. The key is, to just discern God's voice and to discover God's footprints. As the Lord Jesus came to work, those who were raptured to the Lord's presence and gained salvation, Lord's voice was recognized only by them. They found that the Lord's voice had authority and power deriving from God. So they followed him and were raptured to his presence. On the other hand, in spite of years of belief and suffering, those who ignored the Lord's voice, eventually, they were not able to recognize Lord Jesus as Christ. Such people were forsaken by the Lord. So, discerning His voice when the Lord comes again and accepting God's work in the last days, that's the key for man to be raptured before God's throne. Hmm. To be able to discern God's voice? Meng Fu. Yes. Sounds good, but I've never heard such a thing. This is profound insight. Not simple that you have such knowledge. Did you hear about it from somewhere? Dad, with regard to rapture and the Lord's return, one of my friends who is a believer, Lu Zheming, he knows a lot about it. He's devout. Mm. Tomorrow, he's coming to visit you. <laughs> and I thought we could have a fellowship together. Mm. All right. But I invited Elder Wong and Elder Liu over as well. So please, can they also join us tomorrow? Of course. That's no problem. Sure. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Uh. So the Lord said, He will come back and take us to the kingdom of heaven. However, what you're saying is that the Lord has become flesh to do judgment work in the last days. It is said right in the Bible, the Lord will come upon a cloud all in glory. That sounds a lot different. You're saying that the Lord has become flesh in secret. This is a big thing because I can't figure it out. Please, just explain this to me. Yes, he will come on a cloud. He said it. The Lord will come here. There's no reason to dispute it. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the Lord's word will not. So what he says will have been fulfilled. This is what the Lord meant to tell us clearly. Thousands of years here, aren't people waiting for him to come upon a cloud? Before, I think that you just said, the Lord will take us to the kingdom of heaven. That is definite. Hmm. Our Lord is faithful indeed, and so his promises will surely come true. 
Now we need to know his judgment, the second incarnation, will carry it out during the last days. This relates directly to how man is raptured into the kingdom of heaven. If we study the Bible carefully, it's easy to find this. It says the Lord will return through incarnation. So the Lord showed all this to us. Such as, Be you therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Many have mentioned that the Son of Man comes or the Son of Man descends. When we talk about the Son of Man, it refers to a person born to a human and with normal humanity. So the Spirit, then, can't be called the Son of Man. Jehovah God is the Spirit. We can't call Him the Son of Man. The angels people saw. They're spirit entities. They can't be called the Son of Man. Any spiritual being that looks like a human also isn't the Son of Man. Lord Jesus incarnate was called the Son of Man, Christ, because He was the incarnate flesh of God's Spirit. Becoming an ordinary man who just lived among us. So then when the Lord Jesus said, the Son of Man comes, the Son of Man descends, he meant, in the last days, he would become flesh again. Especially the words, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Better prove that the Lord would come through incarnation. If God didn't become flesh, but appeared as the Spirit, he wouldn't suffer as much, much less be rejected by this generation again, which is beyond doubt. Therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ will come back through incarnation and come to do the work of judgment of the last days. I often read these verses, which indeed mention the Son of Man comes and the Son of Man descends. Does the Son of Man here really refer to God's incarnation? People do question, hasn't the Lord promised to rapture us into the kingdom of heaven? And why will he come to do the work of judgment beginning with the house of God? Actually, the judgment work of the Lord is to make overcomers. Well, that is, I mean, to take the saints. Let's see why the Lord does the work of judgment in the last days. There is evidence in the Bible. The Bible mentions about God's judgment in the last days. It's a lot. At least 200 verses. Many verses also prophesied the Lord will do the work of judgment in the flesh. Such as, And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. It's also written in John, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment to the Son. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. The letter of Peter still mentions, For the time has come, that judgment must begin at the house of God, etc. All these verses clearly show to us that God will surely become flesh to do the work of judgment during the last days. God becomes flesh in the last days. He judges, purifies, and saves men through his expression of words. Whoever seeks and accepts the Lord when hearing the Lord's voice is indeed a wise virgin attending the feast with the Lord. This just fulfills the prophecy of the Lord Jesus. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. The wise virgins they hear the Lord's voice and go out to welcome him. Unknowingly, they're taken up before the throne to meet the Lord. 
accept God's purification, judgment, perfection in the last days. Finally, their corrupt disposition will be cleansed in the judgment of God's word, and they will become overcomers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if we want to receive the Lord's promise, we must first come before Almighty God, Christ of the last days. We must accept his judgment and chastisement in order to be perfected and purified. Otherwise, we won't be qualified into the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Without the fact of God's work in the last days, no one understands how these prophecies will be fulfilled and accomplished. Yes, God becomes flesh as the Son of Man in the last days to do the work of judgment, which has indeed fulfilled these mm -hmm. verses. Let's read a passage of Almighty God's words. Mm -hmm. Almighty God says, You only know that Jesus shall descend during the last days. But how exactly will he descend? A sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus and that you are not counted as sinners because of the salvation of God. But this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean. Yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path through which man shall gain life and the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven. For you are both a puppet and prisoner of history. Those who wish to gain life without relying on the truth spoken by Christ are the most ridiculous people on earth. And those who do not accept the way of life brought by Christ are lost in fantasy. And so, I say that the people who do not accept Christ of the last days shall forever be despised by God. Christ is man's gateway to the kingdom during the last days, which none may bypass. None may be perfected by God except through Christ. Almighty God's words have shown us the way to the kingdom of heaven. Christ in the last days is the gateway to the kingdom of heaven. If we don't experience the work of judgment by Christ in the last days, we won't attain purification or perfection and will never enter the kingdom of God. This is the authority manifested by Christ, the incarnate God. It's enough to prove the Lord will definitely return through incarnation to do the work of judgment in the last days, which is a fact fulfilled by God already. Mm -hmm. If one wants to be taken into the kingdom of heaven directly without experiencing God's end time work, he still lives in his imagination and notion which will never come true. Your fellowship about the words the Son of Man descends, which means the Lord's incarnation, does make sense. Oh, thank God. But I still don't understand. If the Lord really comes through incarnation, then how do you explain the many verses 
that prophesy the Lord arriving on clouds. And every single eye shall witness him. Hmm. Yes. According to your fellowship, it is contradictory. Hmm. Brother Lou, hmm. would you mind, please, fellowshipping more with us? All right. Hmm. Before, you mentioned that the Bible prophesies in many places that the Lord will come upon a cloud with great glory. This is a fact. However, there are prophecies in the Bible mentioning he'll come in secret. For example, I come as a thief. For in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man comes, but of that day and hour knows no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Apparently, the Lord's return will be in two different ways. One way will be in secret, the other will be in public. Almighty God's work of judgment in the last days, which we testify today, is the Lord's work when He comes in secret. Because the incarnate God comes to the world as a man looking ordinary and normal. It is secret for all humanity. No one recognizes Him as God, nor does anyone know His true identity. After the Son of Man works and speaks, those capable of recognizing His voice start to then know Him. Yet those who can't discern His voice will treat Him as just an ordinary man, so as to deny and reject Him. Just as when the Lord Jesus did His work in the flesh, He was like an ordinary man outwardly. So people denied, rejected Him, and also condemned Him. But some people, through the Lord Jesus' work and word, well, they recognized him as the incarnate Christ, the appearance of God. Now is when Almighty God is working in secret to save man. He is expressing his words to judge us, purify us, perfect us. During this time, people can't see the scene of the Lord coming on clouds in public. Not until he has gained a group of overcomers so his hidden work of incarnation comes to an end. And then, great disasters fall. The goods rewarded, the evils punished. He will openly appear to all nations. That time, the prophecy of the Lord's public descent will be fulfilled. Just as what is written in the Bible. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. So then at this point, we might as well consider, when people see the Lord publicly appear to them on clouds, they should be wild with joy as we can imagine. But right here it says that all kindreds of the earth shall wail. So why is that, we wonder? That's because when God appears to the public, his hidden work of salvation in his incarnate flesh will have been finished. Then God will reward the good and punish the evil. And then, all those who refuse to accept God's hidden work will thoroughly lose the chance to be saved. Those who pierced him, that is, those who resisted and condemned Christ to the last days, Almighty God, will see Almighty God whom they resisted and condemned, is exactly the return, Lord Jesus. How could they not beat upon their breasts and weep unceasingly? So then, at that moment the scene, all kindreds of the earth shall wail, will appear. Let's read some words from Almighty God. Page 1433. Brother Wong. Yes? May I read it? Sure. Almighty God says, Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus 
that when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. It will herald the end of God's management plan and will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs when there is only the expression of truth. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so, it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. The return of Jesus is a great salvation for those who are capable of accepting the truth. But for those who are unable to accept the truth, it is a sign of condemnation. You should choose your own path and should not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and reject the truth. You should not be an ignorant and arrogant person, but someone who obeys the guidance of the Holy Spirit and longs for and seeks the truth. Only in this way will you benefit. In Almighty God's words, we get to know that God's work in incarnate flesh, in secret in the last days, is the most crucial part to perfect man. Mm -hmm. This is also an extremely rare opportunity for us to be perfected in God's management plan. All those who accept God's hidden work and are perfected are the most blessed ones and have God's special grace. Mm -hmm. If we don't cherish this once-in-a-lifetime chance and miss God's work of making overcomers, we will only end up mourning and sorely regretting. Your sermon is reasonable. It's the enlightenment from the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank God. Yes. You bear witness the Lord has been incarnated as the Son of Man to do the work of judgment. He'll make a group of overcomers before the disasters. He'll appear to all people and all nations. These are in line with the Bible. It's likely that the Lord returns in secret as the Son of Man through incarnation and then appears to the public. Understanding the biblical prophecies in this way will see no contradictions between them. So, if the Lord does come in this way, it's secret and practical how wise it is. Hmm. The Lord is incarnated again to do judgment work in the last days, and this will thoroughly save us from sin and make us holy. This fellowship is practical and has light. Thus, Lord Jesus has been incarnated as the Son of Man, which is quite possible. This is most important. We will pray and we will try to seek the Lord. We should be very cautious. Mm. He'll appear as the Son of Man. This is something that most people easily neglect. After the fellowship just now, I think that when we investigate the Lord's return, we should pay most attention to the words, the Son of Man. The words, the Son of Man, are a mystery.
I've believed in the Lord for years, yet this is the first time I've ever heard that God has been incarnated to do the work of judgment. Though it conflicts with my past imagination and notion, it's in accordance with the Bible, practical, and also beneficial. However, there's still one thing I don't understand. I've been a Christian for half of my life. I've worked hard for the Lord all along and waited for His coming again. Why didn't the Lord reveal to me when He came? The Lord cannot possibly forsake me. I am very confused by that. I would like to know what you think. Fellowship about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think maybe we all thought the same thing. Since we've worked hard for the Lord, He should reveal to us first when He returns. Yes. Since people have followed the Lord half of their life, worked hard and waited for His return, they believe that when He comes, they'll be given a revelation. This is man's imagination, incompatible with the fact of God's work. Right. At that time, the Jewish Pharisees traveled around the world, preaching God's way. Did the Lord then give them revelation when He came? In addition, did any one of the disciples Follow Lord Jesus because they received revelation from Him? None of them did. Although Peter received God's revelation and recognized the Lord Jesus as Christ, the Son of God, it was just after he followed Him for a period of time, heard a lot of the Lord's preaching, and after a while knew more about Him, that he got the Holy Spirit's revelation and knew the Lord Jesus' true identity. Peter didn't receive the revelation before he followed the Lord Jesus. This is a fact. Whoever followed the Lord Jesus recognized he was the upcoming Messiah. This is all because they had heard a lot of his teachings. It's not because they received the revelation first and then recognized him and then followed him. In the last days, Almighty God has already arrived secretly to do judgment work. There are several millions of people who accept and follow Almighty God. They didn't accept God because of receiving the revelation from the Holy Spirit. All of us here have followed Almighty God after recognizing His voice by reading Almighty God's Word and fellowshipping the truth. That's right. It's sufficient to prove that when God incarnate comes to work, He'll never reveal it to anyone to believe in Him and follow Him. Besides, in the last days, God does the judgment work by expressing the truth. Work in the last days is the work that God speaks to the entire universe, so everyone can hear God's voice. God's expression in the last days is His first time to speak publicly to the entire universe and to the whole entire human race since the beginning of creation. God has mentioned several times in Revelation, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. In the last days, God finds his sheep through expressing all of his words and expressing the truth. God's sheep will hear the voice of God. Those who are able to understand God's voice are God's sheep. They are the wise virgins. Those who can't discern God's voice, they are the foolish virgins. This way, men are divided into categories. How wise and righteous God truly is. God is fair and just to everyone. Yes. God has expressed so many words and uttered so much voice. If people still can't hear or recognize, aren't they the very foolish virgins? In every denomination and sect, there are some people hearing God's voice and returning to God. Aren't these people the treasures who were stolen away? The Lord comes in secret just in order to gain these treasures. He will make these people who were first raptured to his throne the overcomers before the disasters. Those who just wait for God's revelation but are unable to recognize God's voice from the words expressed by him just prove that they don't love and respect the truth or know the Lord. They could never be God's sheep. These people will naturally be the objects rejected and eliminated by God. Just like what the Lord Jesus said to Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. 
Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. The Lord Jesus also said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. You can see the Lord's wisdom is right here. If the Lord revealed himself in advance, then why would he say God's sheep hear his voice and listen to his words? Wasn't it contradictory? God reveals whether one belongs to God by whether he can hear or not hear the Lord's voice. This is where God's justice and righteousness lies. Those who haven't received God's revelation yet can recognize God's voice and directly accept Almighty God are truly the blessed ones. So then, investigating the truth doesn't depend on receiving God's revelation. The key is to discern God's voice from Almighty God's Word. Those who find God's Word as the truth and thus accept God are the true believers who love the truth and thirst for God's appearance. If a person simply longs for God's revelation, it's difficult to say whether he really understands and loves the truth and knows God's voice. So people accept the Lord's coming entirely because they hear the Lord's voice and see that His Word is the truth. Thus they accept and obey the Lord's appearance and work. Those people are the only ones who are truly raptured before God. If people just wait for God's revelation without seeking out the words of the Holy Spirit to the churches, they deserve to be eliminated and rejected by God's work. They are the ones who will mourn and grind their teeth in disaster. Mm. <clears throat> well, today, your fellowship is very practical. It edifies me a lot. However, I believe I still need to investigate. Let's end things here. Thank you for coming. Dad. Dad, Jiming said to me, the next time you're free, he wants to fellowship further with you. Meng Fu? Yes? If you accept the Eastern Lightning, I won't oppose it. But why don't you seek carefully before you accept? Now jump in! How dare you decide? when you haven't believed for that long. Why did you do this? Why didn't you talk to me? Do you not see me as your father anymore? Dad, don't get angry. Here, have some water. Please sit down. Just wait, let Mongfu tell you the story. Come on, Dad, have a seat. Yeah, Dad, have a seat. Dad, when Zhimeng first witnessed that God is incarnated the second time and expresses the truth to do the work of judgment beginning with the house of God, I was also shocked and tried to discuss it with you. But then I thought I should try to figure it out first before telling you. During this period, I've read a lot of Almighty God's words. I've seen Almighty God's word, and it's the truth. Every word has power, authority. I'm thoroughly convinced. So, I'm certain that Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus, the appearance of God. Dad, listen. Me and Suwa, we were going to tell you after we went home. But you've come at the right time, so now we have the chance to tell you. Yes, Dad. We just wanted to tell you. 
dead. Only Christ can express the truth and God's voice. Only Christ can express the truth, which is of course true. I don't need you to tell me that. Dad, since we already know that Christ is the truth, we should investigate further. All words expressed by Almighty God are indeed the truth. God's word is rich. The content is this, revealing mysteries, the judgment of humans' corrupt nature, and the guidance of the human life, the determination and destination of man's end, and all other aspects of truth. As long as we read Almighty God's word more, we'll understand the truth, know God, and be gained by God. Almighty God's word is just the Holy Spirit's word to the churches. This is prophesied in Revelations. Where there is the Holy Spirit's word, there is indeed God's voice. Dad, during your whole entire life, wasn't your pursuit of Christ the most valuable thing? Christ's substance is the truth, the way, the life. Only if we read Almighty God's word, experience his work in the last days, and gain the truth, then we will have truly gained Christ. Dad, please investigate carefully. Don't miss the opportunity of the Lord's return. Huh. Miss the opportunity? How could I miss the opportunity? How long have you read the Bible? I've read it my entire life. I think I know more than you do. Do you think I need you to teach me? I have suffered so much for the Lord. I have borne witness. Could the Lord forsake me? The Lord will reveal that to me. I'm very sure about it. Dad. Does Almighty God have to reveal himself to those who know the Bible well when he comes? And does God have to reveal himself to those who work hard for the Lord when he comes? When the Lord Jesus came, did he give revelation to those chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees who served him and knew the Bible well? No. Instead, the Lord chose the people who were able to recognize his voice and who thirsted for the truth. Like Peter, and also John, did either of them follow the Lord Jesus because they received revelation beforehand? I mean, didn't they follow the Lord Jesus because they recognized the Lord's voice? From this we know that those who seek humbly and thirst and search for the truth, only they can be enlightened and see God's appearance. Otherwise, they will easily be against God. Just like what the Lord Jesus said, for whoever exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Dad, how many people who think they know the Bible truly and utterly understand God's will and purpose? Unless you search, the Lord will not reveal to you. He's right, Dad. These words that he speaks, they do hold some weight. It seems Meng Fu is better preaching now than me. You've surpassed me. Just remember to pursue hard. But of course, Rest assured, I know the Lord will not forsake me. You know, I couldn't fall asleep last night. I mean, why did the Lord not reveal this to us first? When the Lord returned? Instead, Meng Fu knew about it earlier than us. 
This fulfills the Lord Jesus' word. So the last shall be first, and the first last. We believed in the Lord for so long. We shouldn't fall behind now. We should seek it as soon as possible. Jun Xing. Hmm. I think I'll ask Meng Fu to invite Brother Lu to our church next time. That's good. Let's go back soon. Gather everyone, our main co-workers. Mm -hmm. Let's investigate Almighty God's work in the last days. Praise the Lord. If Almighty God is capable of revealing the mystery of incarnation to us, then without a doubt I know we can be truly sure that He is the return Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, thank the Lord. This decision is right. I know it. Thank the Lord. Well, we are the elders of the church. We should lead the brothers and sisters to seek and search for the true way. Mm. Bringing God's sheep before the throne of God is our duty. Thank the Lord. Doing this is right. It's after the Lord's heart. It will be blessed by the Lord. Right. have arrived. Brothers and sisters, peace to you. Sorry we're late. There they are. Please have a seat. Hello. So good to see Please you. Please have a seat. All of you have a seat. Hi. Have a seat. Oh, how have you been? All right. Let's start soon. Yes. Good to see you. Yes. So good to see you. How's everyone doing? I agree. Praise to the Lord. Let's continue our fellowship. Yes. Yes. I believed in the Lord for many years. Although I know the Lord Jesus is the God incarnate, I still don't understand much about the truth of his incarnation. Mm -hmm. If the Lord comes again and appears just as he was then, working as the Son of Man, we won't be able to recognize him. Yes. yes. And we can't welcome his coming. Yes. yes. The incarnation truly is a mystery. Very few people out there can understand the truth of it. Yes. Today, please fellowship with us just what incarnation truly is. Yes. yes. We all have no idea about the question from Brother Lin. If the Lord Jesus comes again as the Son of Man, we really could not recognize him. Yes. yes. Maybe we will resist and condemn him, just like the Pharisees. Yes. Sure. The Lord will come again as the Son of Man? Impossible. The Lord Jesus made it clear to us. He'll come on a cloud for all to see. That's right. This is clearly prophesied in the Bible. How in the world could you deny it? That yes. is what the Bible That's says. That's exactly what the Bible it's says. It's undeniable. What other way is there to see it? <clears throat> you say he'll come on a cloud. Are you sure the Lord will come again upon a cloud? The bridegroom is coming at midnight. What if you hear that? Those wise virgins hear it. They hear the bridegroom's voice and welcome the Lord, attending the feast with him. Do you dare deny that'll happen? Mystery is behind the Lord's coming. Mm -hmm. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said Jehovah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know this verse. I know that you do. God's thoughts are always higher than man's thoughts, and God's wisdom cannot be fathomed. It is the truth. There are mysteries in God's work. Since you can't gain insight, don't make a conclusion. Don't judge blindly just by a single verse. You will all mislead and deceive others, and also resist God as well. Yes, yes. yes. I think that's very good. Everyone. Regarding this issue, we must all strive to seek the truth. Yes. Right. Yes. 
God's wisdom is unfathomable. The Lord's return is a mystery. Nobody should jump to conclusions just based on one verse. It'll be better for us to seek it. During the age of law, God used Moses to work. Can't God also use man to do his judgment work in the last days? If a man judges others, does he not strike his own face? How can a man who is unclean be qualified to judge others who are also unclean? We shall not forget, Jesus will take us into the kingdom of heaven. He can't become flesh. You say it's impossible for God to become flesh? Is that for us to decide? The work of judgment is God's own work, so it must naturally be done by God himself. It cannot be done by man in his stead. If people judge Christ according to their imaginations and conceptions... Finally, they nail God to the cross again and have provoked God's disposition. God is not only compassionate and loving, but majestic, righteous, wrathful. Those who offend will be punished. Lord Jesus, whom we have longed for so many years, has returned. Returned? Praise Amen. God. Our receiving cleansing and salvation and entering into the heavenly kingdom is no longer a fantasy, but something that can be achieved. Amen.